So we were doing on the scientific benefits of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So we, I'll share that for you, I can see. Very quickly, uh, this is the chapter I have been doing. Prior to this, uh, I have been doing the PowerPoint, huh? which talks about one lady said how, you know, my nervous tension used to be there and chanting of the holy name made me calm. One fellow said it charges my batteries. Huh? Another fellow said it gives me positivity. Hmm? And another fellow said, you know, that uh, Professor Donald Tuck, he said that the students become more mature, realistic, and tolerant. Huh? So like that, those things we saw, the PowerPoint. After we came to these notes, why do we chant the direction of Mahamantra? Because the age is a very dangerous age of conflict, quarrel, misunderstanding, terror, and tension, and all those things. Um, by praising the Lord, or singing His holy names, or chanting, it pacifies our mind hmm, and cleanses the heart of lust, anger, and greed. So the raging mind, when it becomes calm, when the unclean heart becomes clean, uh, then uh, not only we become peaceful, we become joyful. Hmm. Like, you know, some of the students, uh, once I met a group of students, they started coming to our classes. And they were friends, actually. Uh, I asked, hey, you're all in a group and you seem to be very interested. Seems that you have been already having some discussions. They said, yes, sir. They said that they have been going to this Vipassana meditation group. And they used to keep themselves calm, silent, not speak all day. One word also. Not do anything. Just sit silently. So Vipassana meditation, 10 days they sit like that in one place. So their point is what? If you calmly say, do or don't do anything, then gradually the mind, uh, open up the mind and dig out the things from the mind. What are all there in, inside the mind? Like, uh, you know, sometimes uh, overhauling you or go down or something like that. <laughs> you know, open the door and take out all the saman one by one and clean that. So they said, we did it. It was a little calming, but the course is over. Now we have come back. Now something, some element seems to be missing. On the contrary, they said, when we come to these Hare Krishna classes, we see a sign of uh, great uh, jubilation and happiness in the people. Uh, so, uh, I think that's what we have missed there. We have become peaceful from the problems, but uh, we have not achieved any positive peace. So, I told them, actually, you have negated the negative, hmm? but you have not engaged in the positive. Like, you know, negating the negative means coming to zero, zero, and going from the negative axis to uh, zero, zero. And Krishna conscious chanting, japa, and doing activities and going to the positive. Then when you come to the positive, then you feel happiness. Yeah, and the soul, soul becomes surcharged by joy. And we told the shloka, where is the Hare Krishna Mahamantra from? Kalisantra and Upanishad. Viti Shodaksha Shakam Nam Nam Kalikal Mashanashan Nato Pratrupai Sarva Videshi Drishite. The Mahamantra is given there. Yeah, the Mahamantra actually cleanses the heart of, especially the three prominent anarthas called lust, anger, and greed, followed by lamentation, illusion, and fear. Hmm? Yeah. The meaning of Mahamantra, we said, somebody can read this Mahamantra, it's a very important meaning. Already we read it, and we are just revising it now. Yeah. Please read it, one of you. Our prayer of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra means addressing Radha and Krishna for the beginning engagement in their service. Hare Krishna means Hare, O oh Radha Rani, Supreme Devotee of Lord Krishna. O Krishna, supremely attractive. O Radha Rama, 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 one who delights in the devotional service of Sri Radha. Please accept me as your servant and engage me in your eternal devotional service so that I can get ready for the service of mine. Since the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is a prayer, we must chant with full understanding of the meaning of mantra and chanting prayerful mood. Our chanting must be like the desperate cry of a lost child crying for its mother. The mood should be one of the helplessness and utter dependence on Krishna. Yeah. So, this is a very important thing. In the Chaitanya Chattamrita, they said, Rasika Shekara Krishna Paramak. What happened? Video is not coming. There's some problem. Yeah, the video is stopped. Just a minute. Let me check it. Yeah. 
ಕಸಿಕ ಶೇಖರ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮ ಕರುಣ ಹೇದು ಈ ಹೇತು ಹೈತೆ ಪ್ರೇಮಾರ ಉದ್ಗಮ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಐತೆ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಮರ್ಸಿಫುಲ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟಿವ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಫುಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಮಿಸ್ಚುವಸ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಏನೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಷನೇಟ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಬನಮಲನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಫರ್ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಕಾಮಡೇಟಿಂಗ್ ನೇಚರ್ Uh, friendly friendly nature so uh, these two are the cause of the attraction in the heart of the devotee so when you are chanting hare krishna depending on which one is attractive to you either you are attracted to the sporty nature of krishna or you are attracted to the compassionate nature of krishna or you are attracted to both of them so one has to actually <coughs> chant the holy name in a mood of prayer you know understanding one's dependence on the lord Uh, uh chanting it with gratitude chanting as a prayer it's a call for deliverance prophet says deliverance means please deliver me from this you know ocean of birth and death back to my eternal home which is your home and my home both uh, the spiritual world so this is actually called as mantraartha chintanam huh? mantra artha chintanam three words are there huh? mantra means the cha- the holy name Uh, and artha means the meaning chintanam means contemplation mantra artha chintanam means contemplating on the meaning of the mantra one should call out the mantra oh krishna oh shimitradanani you are my eternal swami and swamini some other i have forgotten you turned away from you come to this material world and here i am finding myself in a very precarious position please pick me up from this ocean of birth and death and place me at your lotus feet along with millions of devotees that been under service to you hmm? hanuman is rendering service to sitaram hmm? garuda is rendering service to lakshmi narayan similarly all the gopis gopas and cows calves because they are all rendering service to radha and krishna so all these great devotees are serving you let me also serve you like them hmm? so this uh, kind of mood uh, if one cultivates regularly in spiritual life i am a servant of your servants it is actually a reality huh? in this world we have to be servant of somebody either somebody is a servant of maya by becoming servant of their senses somebody is attracted by sex life then they become servant of their senses somebody is attracted by you know certain food items which are prohibited for them like a diabetes patient he still eats sweet so he becomes servant of his senses and he suffers so instead of becoming a servant of senses and suffering we can become master of senses by engaging them in service of krishna so prabhu spoke on very famous lecture called uh, you know gaining independence by declaring our dependence on krishna that is the topic gaining independence how by declaring our dependence on krishna so that is a, that is a whole uh, secret here huh? very simple i'll tell you for example a dog can be a street dog or a dog can be a master's dog huh? So if a dog is a master's dog, it has declared its dependence on the master. I think there is some problem in there. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I think there is some issue with your video. Yeah, so correct. Like correct, correct. I am seeing it just now. I am setting it right. So there is a problem with the camera. I can remove this camera, I think, just a minute. Uh, what is that? Okay, let's have a see how it goes. So, Uh, I was telling you, hmm, what is the last point I was making? Dog. About the master dog. Ah, correct. That's true, yeah. So, uh, the dog living in the master's house, you know, it has, it's given a small house to sleep and live. It's given costly biscuits. It goes to the master in the car, you know. He has to do some service. He just brings some newspaper or something. And it, is, uh, it has a natural affection for the master. 
on the contrary a street dog you know is pelted by stones by the people in the street it's caught by the municipality van and taken and sometimes it is thrown in the forest to the hungry lions huh? yeah sometimes a huge pack of dogs are captured in, in the city and taken to the forest and so on. similarly people who are unprotected by krishna's lotus feet they become victims of yamaraj yeah huh? yamadutas huh? you can see that or they become victims of their own senses by sense gratification they become slapped by lust anger and greed huh? they just cannot get out of them so initially somebody may think why should i have slavery towards krishna but if you carefully observe the world around you either you are a servant of the state or you are servant in a jail can any free citizen tell you that i am nobody servant can anybody say like in america for example you have to drive the car on the right side in india you have to drive the car on the left side are you not following the state law hmm. like you know can anybody do any damn thing in america they have the statue of liberty holding a torch you know so uh, let us assume that america is a free state huh? so can anybody take a gun and shoot anybody without becoming victimized by the police i mean without being uh, caught by the police or sued in the court huh? and uh, can anybody uh, you know catch somebody and someone else's wife and uh, flee away without being punished by the police huh? so you will see that you know in the in in you know even while living in the world with your eyes you can see that we all are servant of somebody either servant of the state or servant of the jail mm-hmm. so we need we have to be servant of krishna servant of our slavery to our senses so therefore the chanting of the holy name is voluntary acceptance uh, of our servitorship to krishna and that is actually <clears throat> ultimately beneficial for us like all of you for example your parents are sending you to your college and paying you the fee and they're protecting you they're doing a lot of good for you huh? they're giving you the food they are accom- arranging accommodation for you arranging dresses for you arranging good education for you and they're concerned about your welfare huh? so you are also accepting it therefore you are good good sons huh? of the parents then there are bad sons of the parents who are they they take money from the parents but they don't do what parents want them to do they go for smoking drinking drugs they roam with women they don't study they don't earn the degree they don't become responsible in taking a job uh, so they are like the street dog uh, they become vagabonds good for nothing uh, and they eventually become criminals and uh, thieves and everything like that and parents actually feel very bad to see that uh, say i am providing all facility for him to flourish in life but he is perishing uh, so in the same manner we can become good sons of the lord or bad sons of the lord we have the choice uh, so let's say mahamantra prayer and then we proceeded ahead it's a great deliverer of the mind my living as some depression stress anxiety all those different things uh, on the contrary we get a security steady intelligence happiness efficiency equal at all these things creative thinking joyful disposition detachment from useless wasteful thoughts uh, we get child like simplicity freedom from the birth old age disease death so then how do we connect the whole name is like a spiritual mobile it said the example of kunti gajendra all those examples we said isn't it hmm. krishna hears our call we can be connected draupadi called and krishna responded rajendra called and lord responded and then we came to the practical benefits of chanting hari krishna mantra it is like a medicine for kali yuga chanting is called as sarva roga nivarani it is a one stroke solution for all problems shoka moha bhaya everything will be given out even yathagaram viritamam this verse says even if you chant unknowingly like a child touches fire adult touches fire fire is the same effect chanting also has a same type of effect so this is very amazing isn't it how uh, even unknowingly hippies were chanting the, and they benefited so first is the medicine for kali yuga second is it cleanses the heart en naam shri matrena puman bhavati nirmala that's the second one hmm. it's a it cleanses the impurities in the heart huh? like a lust anger and greed huh? so and then it controls the senses uh, which we said uh, like ratnakar was uncontrolled in his senses he became controlled so if you simply see the pictures you can remember like you know here is its antidote for kali yuga you can just see the picture of ajamila saved from the yamapash that means holy name saves us from you know uh, getting uh, dest- destroyed and going to hell hmm? second picture you see dromaraja's unclean heart became a clean heart 
you see the picture then you find a uncontrolled fellow carrying a sword in the hand and coming running towards narada the valyakoda ratnakar she became controlled in his senses she became a sober almiki rishi hmm? like that hmm. and then west was transcendental knowledge like you can see here arjuna is always the devotee of krishna chanting is krishna's names and krishna is giving him knowledge of the bhagavad gita hmm. and it is the best form of repentance as ajamida repented he see here ajamida repented and purified his heart by chanting and he went back to godhead hmm? yeah and also Uh, faith and determination increases by chanting you see the picture of you know haridas thakur not allured by the prostitute his faith because of firm faith in chanting he developed determination and he became indefeatable by maya mm-hmm. ultimately liberation and going back to godhead i see the picture of krishna meeting a gopa huh? so ultimately we all will attain this so everything you need you attain you attain back to godhead you attain determination you attain you know repentance it i it inspires you to repent and purify your heart huh? you attain knowledge huh? you attain you know control of senses and uh, you know purification of heart you know and you attain and and you get the medicine in life to heal the body mind soul huh? so these are all the benefits of chanting more than there was seven benefits we saw huh? so now we are going today to how to chant with concentration please read it concentration means steadily focus or to hold the mind on one form or object for a long time dharana means fixing the mind on one object desha bandhas chitasya dharana however when there is difficulty in keeping the mind fixed within a limited area of focus one may keep the mind moving within a border area in which everything relates to the central object of concentration or meditation yeah for example say aeroplane is coming to the airport so it wants to land but it's not getting signal because air traffic is very heavy so what does aeroplane do it keeps hovering in the sky going round and round and waiting for the opportunity when the signal comes it will go and land in a particular allotted place you will see that similarly you go to meet a doctor and the compounder is saying please here is a facility for sitting please sit and you will be invited and there are 30 40 people sitting huh? sometimes i have experienced myself i used to go with my mother or father hospital and then the computer will say that you wait we will wait 10 minutes and we will get restless and think that better we go home and come back so after one hour i would come back the crowd will be same huh? again there will be 30 40 people after 3 hours again it is same a computer will say see your turn came you didn't come so now we take one more token and you would again wait so one day i realized actually if i go home and come back and my turn goes away so better just persist sit there wait and wait and wait and after one hour one and a half hours the turn will come we used to go in similarly in chanting what happens with us hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 when you chant you know sometimes you know mind has certain worries and what about tomorrow's exam will paper be easy or it's going to be difficult or the mind may say now i come to the final year many interviews are coming one of my friends got nicely placed in a good company and why i am not getting placed is i am i going to get a better company or i may i may not get at all this by by the placement from the college so this kind of either anxiety about the placement anxiety about the performance in the exam anxiety about some parents health huh? anxiety of the future so or sometimes uh, we may be incompetent in some certain subject and that fear comes you know uh, this company is awarding me a job in this particular field i am not very really confident and if i only i got that company that would have been more suitable so mind keeps on you know thinking about various options and uh, possibilities and the thoughts are gushing out of the mind eh? multiple thoughts uh, just like people are gushing out of a train eh? in a station and the train comes and stops eh? so um, mind mind becomes very very Uh, restless like that and we are unable to focus hold it so therefore he says here what he is saying if you are not able to concentrate on the hearing of the sound just hover around it huh? make your best don't go away from that even if mind is not concentrating still make an effort huh? like aeroplane keep hovering over then they will invite you to land huh? then you will be able to concentrate 
That is the meaning of that. Yato yato nishchala ti manas chanchala mastiram. Tathas tato niyam yai that atman yai vasham nai yai. He says, then mind goes, then bring it back. Concentrate. Then mind goes again. Again bring it back. He says. But those who make an effort to bring it back, they are the ones who get concentration. Those who leave the mind to let it go the way it wants, those people will get diffused mind, which goes in multiple directions. Bahusha kahi anantasya buddhi yo abhyava sayina. Krishna says, they are unconcentrated people. Actually, unconcentrated person cannot do anything in life. Material, spiritual, he can't be successful. For example, take a paper and keep it in the top of your roof in the hot sunny day. The sun is at the peak of the sky. Pretty hot, but it cannot burn the paper. You will see. Despite being sun being so big and heat being so intense, it cannot burn. But keep the paper inside your room. From the window, if the sunlight is coming, capture it through a magnifying glass and send it on the focal point and put a paper there. It will burn. It's not directly under the sun. The heat is much lesser compared to, you know, what you put it, whatever, wherever you put it in the top. But how is it able to burn the paper because of concentration? So the same principle. If I am concentrated in doing one thing at a time, study while you study, chant while you chant, play while you play, sleep while you sleep, you will become a superman. It is a fact actually. You know that example Archimedes gave. He said, give me a, a rod long enough and give me a fulcrum to keep the rod on. I can even till the earth, he said. Uh, so that is actually called willpower. By, by uh, willpower, if one tries to concentrate, gradually the concentration will increase for a period of time. Uh, and then that concentration can become one point. Just like Arjuna, we say Arjuna's concentration. Uh, another a couple of examples I'll give you, you will understand this point of concentration. Say you take a uh, tea pie, what do you call that? Uh, like, a, like a tea pie or a barrel kind of thing. You, where you pour oil from, you know? There's a you know, handle kind of thing. When you pour the oil into another tea pie, mm-hmm. uh, this as a whole, you're pouring the oil from this to this. You, to, you really have to be attentive. <laughs> if you are not attentive, the oil will go outside. Huh? Because when you turn it like this, like the oil will come like this. You have seen that? Oil will gush out like this. So you have to make sure it exactly goes into the hole like this. Like this it goes. And then the whole oil will come without even a drop coming out. But that requires absorbing attention. If you are looking here and there talking to somebody, you know the whole oil will pour out. Same with the welding rod also. If you take a welding rod, in first year of engineering we do that, welding. So when you take the welding rod too close, it will stick. When you keep it two millimeters away, it will not make the weld. Not possible. At the same time, you have to safeguard your eyes also with a shield also. You can't take out and see also. If you see very near, it will come on your face. So you have to make sure that you keep the shield also, see through the shield and keep one millimeter distance and hold it with concentration. Until some, some teachers have seen welding teacher from one end, one feet, two feet, they can do continuously. That shows their concentration. Yeah, see, yeah? So, same principle in chanting also. Hmm? Actually, if you understand these little examples I am giving, you will, you will appreciate this. When we were in NCC, you know, when we, so we used to have this uh, shooting exercise. First year, we had the shooting, I mean, this uh, shooting and uh, arrow on the target. Second year, they gave us a gun. Huh? So, they told us the gun, you will need to learn to shoot at the target. So, of course, the target is a little away. Maybe like 30 feet away, 60 feet away. Huh? Uh, so you, you need to shoot exactly at. Uh, so the teacher would tell us that those who at least shoot within the range, huh, they are better than those who whose uh, you know, bullet goes somewhere else only. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere near. Huh? So uh, one by what you would do, first you would shoot it. And then after the bullet goes and hits a place, you will put a circle around it. So he was showing that, say, sir, I have shot it at the right place. That's not the way you shoot. First you mark the circle and then you shoot. And what happens in our life also, many times we do, we do something whimsically and then we think that maybe this is my goal. And we surely go somewhere, where? Nowhere. That's where we go. So, uh, if you really want to go somewhere, uh, we 
really have to first mark the target and aim towards it like aeroplane trying to land in airport or i gave you the example of the doctor doctor's patients waiting the chanting also requires patience so we want to have patience we want right in the beginning only concentration i think many times i find boys ask they want to do everything quick imagine for example you developed obesity and somebody told you hey obesity is very dangerous you are not able to breathe properly nowadays uh, you, you may it may lead to your blood pressure rise and you may get a heart attack uh, you are having it's deadly and somebody wants you and you also get frightened and immediately go to your gym and say sir you know i have come to know that you know i may die by a heart attack because of too much heavy body and i am going on eating junk food you know i have come here now within half an hour please make me one third of my body hmm? is it possible hmm? that you have big huge obese body and you want to become one third it, you know some people go for a quick weight loss program hmm? like uh, one uh, one man was very stressed one one manager one of our duty doctors at a hospital so he came to the hospital and said sir i i tested my you know stress levels you know they have a uh, stress testing machine you know that mm-hmm. you have to stand on that and the you know the conveyor keeps moving and you have to move your leg they they have some what do you call that uh, i don't i don't know the name of the machine there's one machine so he tested if on a treadmill ah uh, treadmill yeah treadmill yeah so he stood in the treadmill and found out that stress levels are very high uh, so he went to the doctor and said sir can i quickly reduce my stress doctor said that is your problem he said <laughs> you cannot quickly do anything you you need patience actually you because you are too quick therefore you are getting stress doctor said make a modification in your lifestyle he said you sit with your whole days activity and you have to cut it into half you are doing uh, you know what four people are supposed to do don't stress yourself like this modify your lifestyle and stick to the modified pattern and then stress will automatically reduce and don't go for a quick you know stress relief program or don't go don't go for a quick weight loss program these things cannot be done quick we require patience we require patience so in our life uh, we have i'm telling you this very very practical examples you can see obese person cannot become a slim person immediately stressed person cannot become a stress free person overnight these things require practice and therefore nowadays people have recognized this fact you see them in the morning going for jogging daily uh, they do yoga daily see what happens when you do yoga asanas if you don't do yoga your body becomes stiff As, especially like now now i am 54 now you know if i don't stretch my body daily and breathe deeply then gradually the cells become a very very stiff kind of thing like rubber and they become they are not elastic but they become stiff eventually and afterwards you know so there's a people walk like this you have seen that uh, when they become very old 70 80 and then inside the house they walk like this, like a like a toy that is because they have, they have not exercised their uh, body <clears throat> if you exercise the body daily with yoga then your elastic body you have uh, and even at 70 80 you will actually uh, you know remain healthy so these things require steady practice sattva guna is required if you have to do yoga daily i need uh, your yeah, sattva guna mindset by which at the appropriate time punctually i will start my yoga i will do it same thing with chanting also every day if i, if I chant that requires steady mind huh? if without steadiness i will one day i will chant and uh, for one week i won't chant huh? isn't it so therefore some qualities we have learned now what we have to do some of you can summarize what i said just now three four qualities i said that are necessary for good chanting anybody uh, one is concentration program yes that is true now anybody else can say one more quality will power uh, ah we need will power to will power and determination to stick on to the process you know without uh, giving it up yeah yes thank you hare krishna prabhu ji yeah uh, uh, i think you just not told like how we we jog and uh, or we do a yoga and everything we continuously like keep ourselves occupied right so similarly if we do regular chanting yeah i think we get a taste for it and then we go ahead and ah, we right. go into more rounds right yeah exactly when you chant regularly then uh, because of the concentration the purification takes place because of some purification the taste develops when the taste develops then you are eager to do more huh? eager to do more and eager to do consistently very good 
So Chaitanya Prabhu's point is one should uh, persist and continue without giving it up, correct? Yes, Prabhuji, yes. Ah, consistency correct. and persistence. Consistency, uh, persistence and consistence. Yeah, thank you. So we learned about concentration and consistence and persistence and uh, willpower. One should apply the willpower and determination in doing it. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, what example? Quickly name the examples. You don't have to explain the examples. We let us not forget the examples. Just name the examples. Any of you? One example comes to your mind, which I said now. Uh, aeroplane and uh, not, yeah. it not giving the signal. Uh, correct. And another example. About that, uh, about that, uh, obese person who was stressed went to the doctor, and he was very fixated on increase or getting a quick result. Ah, correct. Actually, we are, these are two different people. One is obese fellow, another one is stressed uh, uh, shop floor manager. Huh? So the obese fellow wanted a quick weight loss program and the stressed man wanted a quick stress loss program, <laughs> stress relief program. Huh? So the, what is the lesson we learned from these examples uh, and the obese person and the stressed person? Uh, it is a gradual process. And ah, gradual process. Don't go for shortcuts. It's a gradual process and steady process. And uh, you have to invest day after day, month after month. Don't uh, look for shortcuts. And shortcuts, if they go, do, it's very dangerous. Some people want to quickly lose the weight and they do something, they may die also. It's very dangerous. So one should not do anything uh, foolishly for taking shortcuts. So go steadily. So those two examples you said. And the examples that Shekhar probably reminded us, the doctor's example and the airplane example, that shows about patience. Huh? That also says about patience that we have to Actually, patience and persistence, both. So that you wait, then you get the opportunity. If you don't wait, you will get lost. Huh? Yeah. The, these two, two examples, four examples you have recollected. Anything else example that comes to your mind? Two more examples I gave for concentration. Anybody remembers? Uh, magnifying glass and the sunlight on paper. Uh, actually, magnifying glass and sunlight, I, yeah, I gave for diffused sunlight and a focused okay. sunlight. Huh? Okay. Uh, even a focused sunlight inside a room is superior to a diffused sunlight right under the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the, that example we say for concentration purpose we gave. And then I told the two experts who do uh, 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 the activity with concentration I gave. Anybody else can say Akash, Sachin or Pratap. I gave two examples of people who do their work with good concentration. You want to try? Sachin, Akash, or Pratap, Prabhu? You remember? Um, I, uh, uh, I, I, I can't uh, uh, recollect. Uh, okay. No problem. When we tell you, you will remember it immediately. Akash, you want to recollect? You want to try? For concentration, apart from the magnifying glass, I gave subsequently a couple of more examples I gave. Prabhuji, I, I... I am not able to. Okay, no problem. Who can uh, help uh, Sachin and Akash recollect? I gave two examples. Oh, I think uh, one was uh, your uh, first year engineering welding, which where you go to. Correct, and... correct, correct. Welding, welding example. Okay, now let us ask Sachin and Akash uh, what uh, they remember in the welding example. What do you like to say? Um, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you said that uh, when uh, when we attend the welding class that. Um, uh, the machine we have to point uh, like not very far and uh, not very near. Uh, very correct. That's the point. That's the main point. Just one millimeter distance. The distance should be so precise that it will weld. If it is little less, little more, no, it will not work. It will either get stuck or it will not weld at all. Mm -hmm. Correct example. And uh, another example I gave of a uh, tea pie and oil. Akash, you can say about that. Um, Prabhuji, um, unfortunately, no, Prabhuji. I'm not no. Able to... Okay, no problem. Pratap Prabhu can recollect. Tipai, Tipai, and oil. Pratap, Pratap Patnaik. Prabhuji, I think uh, he is uh, Manmali Pandit Prabhu. Is Pratap Prabhu. Oh, is it? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, okay. But I thought Patnaik means from Odisha, I thought. We were talking about uh, not doing any multitask under one thing at a time, like uh, by pouring on oil to the other container, mm. you should put pressure and, uh, 
focus you are right that's the word i was looking for focus <laughs> focus is required gubuk 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 like the oil comes no then you should make sure you are attentively watching it otherwise all the oil will go out everything will be spoiled the floor gets oily and it takes long time to clean and all after that so i have seen in the petrol bunk i have seen these fellows are so expert when they are moving from one tipa to another tipa very coolly they do it because they have got used to it yeah how many of you seen in village uh, village women going to the well water fetching water and they keep one pot over that one more pot they keep and in this hand also they get another pot and here another pot and they have baby also here <laughs> they keep baby also hold the baby like this and two pots and one pot above all that and they will be walking like this if you see you know they move the head also like this i don't know how they keep the balance huh? it requires attention without attention everything will fall on the ground huh? in villages is a very common sight even today you can see that hmm? so we are talking about concentration in the same manner chanting also requires all this kind of you know yeah yeah so uh, this example i gave you huh? uh, please read this kurma purana Purva Purana says, uh, "Dharana means to concentrate the mind steadily on one point for twelve seconds. Twelve such dharana is dharana, and twelve such dharana is samadhi." Yeah. So twelve seconds means dharana. Twelve into twelve, that's called dharana, and twelve into twelve into twelve, that is called dhyana. That means uh, sorry, samadhi. So samadhi comes to actually twenty-five minutes and twenty-eight seconds. Huh? That means twenty-five minutes. You, your mind doesn't go anywhere else. You are fully able to concentrate. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Almost half an hour. Can you imagine? When mind doesn't go even an iota, even a bit, it doesn't go here, there, anywhere. That is samadhi state. And twelve into twelve is one forty-four seconds. That is the dharana. That is dhyana. See the words like dharana in Hindi also. Dharan karna means what? dharan karna in hindi you heard the word like varah dev dharan kar rahe hain he is doing he is holding the earth in the task dharana dharana means to hold huh? uh, and dhyana means what concentration ah, group exactly dhyana means uh, you know dhyan means concentratedly doing anything and samadhi means absorption hmm? complete absorption in a thing and oblivious to the external surroundings any of you experience your eyes are open huh? and somebody is standing right in front of you and they have come to talk to you the eyes are also open and they are and they are shaking your shoulder hey don't you see i am here and then you come to external consciousness that means even if your eyes are open if your mind is not in something you will not be there no? you will be there where your mind has gone therefore it is that you are where your mind is it is said and you are present where your mind is even if your eyes are open it makes no difference at all no? if your mind has gone to some place similarly samadhi when we say we become absorbed in chanting even in a fish market or a vegetable market you know you can you know chant the holy name and not get distracted Huh? With the loud, roaring babble of voices, there still you can be concentrated. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nothing is of any consequence to you. You enter into a timeless zone huh? where the chanting is there. You are there. Nothing else is there. Huh? So such concentration is possible. That's what is samadhi. Huh? Please read it. What should be the object of our concentration? Uh, besides concentration, the word dharana also means to hold, grasp, or support. Concentration is impossible without something for the mind to grasp or to hold on. Dharana means centering the mind on a single thought, or in the case of bhakti yogis, holding that transcendental form of Krishna in the mind along with the sound of his holy name. During concentration, the mind becomes steady and serene, free from distractions. All mental energy is fixed actually, on one thought. Now, actually, it is during concentration the mind becomes steady and serene, free from steady and serene, free from myself. Okay, steady and serene, free from distractions. All mental energy is fixed on one thought. The form, 
uh, the one uh, one thought the form and sound of krishna's holy name in deep concentration these senses become still one loses awareness of the body and his surroundings for example one is engrossed in reading his favorite book he will his favorite book he will not hear if someone calls his name or even stands before him such one pointedness of mind is called ekagrata in yoga yeah you see the form and sound have a very very strong connection for example say your mother is calling from india huh? she is making a phone call to you as soon as you receive the phone when she is speaking her voice is easily recognizable by you huh? when you recognize her voice immediately you see her form huh? in front of your mind you know her expressions her emotions Her speech it becomes very very easy for you to recognize. How many of you can confidently say, "Prabhu, when I hear a voice of somebody, that person comes in my mind." You have experience, correct? Uh, yeah, that is called as voice print. We call it. Every one of us has voice print, like uh, Prabhu Pad, for example. If you hear, "One day, hum, tang 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 tang," you heard now. Shri Guru, when he says, immediately you remember Prabhu Pad. Huh? Oh, this is Prabhu Pad's voice. Huh? Papa uh, sings in this particular manner, you know. When your spiritual master speaks, you know when you hear a sound, immediately you can recognize this is my spiritual master. And not only you recognize the voice, you also remember the person, you know, uh, to whom that voice belongs to. Yeah. So in the same manner, the chanting of the holy name, you know, when we chant Krishna in the spiritual world, Krishna and his name are non-different. So naturally, immediately Krishna person is present when you chant the holy name. Huh? but unfortunately why we are not able to remember anybody can say why are we not able to see the person krishna when we are uh, chanting the holy name because we don't have a relation with him like uh, uh, forgotten a relation oh we have a eternal relationship with him but we have forgotten the relationship with him ah oh, we have forgotten a relationship with him that's one reason We have forgotten our relationship with him. That's one reason. Yeah. Our material eyes cannot see him, Prabhuji. Wonderful. Chaitanya Prabhu made a brilliant point. <laughs> with our material eyes, we are unable to see him. He yeah, actually Krishna is spiritual, and uh, with our material eyes, we are not able to see him. Very good. Very good. Yeah. That's a good point also. That is one another reason I will tell you. Hmm? Oh, Prabhuji, yeah. is it because? Uh... uh the our connection is like uh, there is a one way mirror that you were talking about that uh, krishna he's can seeing. see us all the time uh and he is seeing us and we are not able to see him oh that's correct akash what you said is correct so he is seeing us and we are not able to see him now we can we ask akash to what makes us not see him that he is able to see us we can't see him is it only the cooling glass because prabhu ji uh, uh, you you need uh, to see something which is spiritual you cannot use material uh, material ah, with material eyes we are not able to see him see his spiritual form and yes. therefore he comes in this world in the deity form <clears throat> shri vigra form deity form is a spiritual form visible to the material eyes huh? so yes. uh, he becomes physically visible for us so that we can dress him decorate him worship him bow down to him and then gradually the eyes become purified and spiritualized and then we can see huh? then we can see the spiritual form all, all of this is correct i might i am going to add one more thing uh, one more angle to it uh, now one very simple example i'll tell you when a mother you know takes a child to the bathroom bathes the child you know puts a napkin around the child's body then puts powder on the body of the child you know, dresses the child decorates the child with kajal and all that in the eyes uh, and some bindi or something and then the ties the rubber band sometimes the uh, mothers they put a gopi dress sometimes they put uh, frock kind of dress whatever dress huh? puts the socks the shoes the lace everything prepares the child to go to school huh? and picks up the child and then feeds the child so when she does all these things what is she exactly doing if you observe it's a regular interaction with the child uh, when you regularly interact that object enters your mind huh? it is called a prolonged exposure produces impressions sanskar prolonged exposure for example ajamira went to forest he had a prolonged exposure to the dirty site huh? and that entered his head when he went home he didn't go home with the flowers he went home with flowers along with a dirty impure scene 
to which he made himself have a prolonged exposure. Uh, that is the thing. On the contrary, you will find Parikshit Maharaj, how he became a lover of Krishna. When he was a child, he had a prolonged exposure to the uh, Vishnu dolls, Krishna dolls, uh, which he was worshipping. Even when I was a small kid uh, in my home, my mother, uh, when I was actually, not even I was, not even sitting, even when I was like, you know, the children swim. You have seen that when they are swimming, they are very, very young actually. Must be a few months or probably, I mean, uh, before the, you know, before you become uh, one or two. Huh? So, at the time there used to be dolls in our home. But I could clearly remember even now, you know, when I grew up to two or two and a half years, I used to ask my mother, why this blue doll has four hands? Why that blue doll has only two hands? And that uh, fellow with, uh, this fellow is playing with flute. And this person is having Shanka Chakra Gada Padma, you know. So she said, this is Vishnu, this is Krishna. She said, that's the difference. And the another personality was green, who was having a bow and arrow. I didn't know even who they are. But uh, then she told me, this is Lord Ram. And who is behind them? A fair color person is uh, Lakshman. And there was another one lady sitting on a lotus and having a you know, long uh, leaf uh, book in her hand. I asked, who is this? This is Saraswati. There was another lady standing on the lotus. And she was doing like this. And all the gold coins were falling from her hands. Who is that? That is Lakshmi. Huh? So, these were introduced to us when we were just two or three years old. Later on, when we grew up, we understood these personalities more. So, it's very important to give exposure to our senses. The pure uh, and holy items. Like you all are getting exposure to prasadam daily now. After eating prasadam regularly, you will not want to eat meat. You will not be able to take wine or cigarette or drugs or, uh, you know, unoffered food. You will hate it. And that is the power of prasad because you have got exposure to a pure item. Uh, so, when you take in pure items, then impure items you hate it. Like, you know, for example, we are eating halwa, but the pig is eating stool, you see. We will never be attracted to stool because we have had, had a higher taste. We have had the halwa, isn't it? So, once you develop a higher taste, you reject the lower taste. Uh, impure things are no more attractive. For example, there is an impure state, semi-pure state, uh, and pure state, and ultra-pure state. There are four stages. Now, for example, so there are many students, you go to the room, they put a huge poster in the room on the wall of some nude actress, a nude actor. Sometimes they put practically no dress, scantily dressed, dirty looking, arousing, lusty feelings if somebody looks at it. But they like it. They like impurity. They like dirty, such kinds of things. And they drink also, they smoke also. That is a platform of impure platform. Now, semi-pure platform. Uh, what is semi-pure platform? You are practicing spiritual life. You want to act purely. But sometimes the mind goes towards impurity also. And very quickly you wake up and say, chi, chi, chi. Oh, that's very bad. I should not do that. I should not see that. Then you withdraw yourself. That is semi-pure state. Hmm? Because you are partially intelligent and partially foolish. In the semi-pure state. And uh, when you go to the pure state, you know, then the impure things become abom abominable for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like for example, uh, your friend is calling you to a movie. You go to the movie and you find it's an adult movie and it is many dirty things they are showing. You get up and walk out. You tell him, hey, this is not what I wanted to see. I'm not interested. Because you become pure now, the impure things, uh, your mind rebels them. They, your mind says, hey, throw this out. It's not good. Like some people, like Prabhupada's gang came to one temple. Uh, he went to the washroom. And in the washroom, the bucket was extremely dirty. Huh? And the washroom appeared nasty smelling. Huh? Prabhupada uh, finished his business, came out and said, what is this? You know, your washroom is so nasty. They said, Prabhupada, we have thoroughly cleaned it. Huh? We thought you will be very happy the way we have cleaned it. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if a clean lavatory is so bad and an unclean lavatory, I don't know, I can't even imagine what it is. Huh? So, because the, then Prabhupada said, because you are in Tamaguna, you are not able to see the unclean lavatory. Huh? If you are in Satvaguna, you cannot tolerate. Huh? You will see that, like well, once Prabhupada asked for water, one boy brought, one devotee brought a water with his finger inside. Huh? Like this he gave. So can you put your finger inside the water and give water like this? It's unclean. Huh? In Tamaguna, we may act like that. In Satvaguna, you have to give water like this. Huh? 
and uh, then you will also put a lid also on the top so that uh, you know uh, the water will remain clean and also you will not you know if this is a glass of water you will not keep the lid down on the ground and again put it back you won't do that because if you put it on the ground and put it back and then dust will fall inside isn't it so one is very attentive similarly when somebody is eating prasadam you will not cross their plate and walk huh? because if you cross over the plate and walk your dust from your feet will fall on the plate huh? so you become very conscious huh? when you are uh, uh, when you when you become when you are in satvaguna huh? so otherwise uh, Uncleanliness. So why why did I give these examples of Satyaguna now? Why did I give? Prior to that, what I said. Ah, uh, I was telling about uh, pure state, correct? Right, no. So when you come to pure state, the impure things become very very glaring. <laughs> yeah. You you like you come to your room, for example. Uh, recently, I went to one place. We had to go see one uh, group of rooms where youths were staying. in one of the temples in south india they have some ten rooms they have left it for the youth to stay so they told us you know if you have any devotee youth they can come and stay so i went to see that one of the boys opened his room my lord so many things in the room there is a basket lot of books and you know electronic items and so many things and the you know clothes were hanging so many bunch of unwashed clothes were hanging room was full of sandy and you know, he sleeps with the shoes and there is no place to keep anything in the room it's like looking like some uh, what do you call it uh, dustbin <laughs> huh? so he was saying that my room is a little dirty i'm sorry you are selling i said it's all right <laughs> because you know <clears throat> based on our guna we keep our place huh? on the other hand you go to your devotee's room you know he gets up in the morning and throws water and cleans the room you know sweeps the room and cleans the room and the floor clothes are washed and kept neat and tidy in the cupboard you know? so when we come to sattva guna pure we can't tolerate impurity uh, it is not possible for us and in the same manner uh, ultra pure means spiritual vishuddha sattva uh, that is a very very advanced platform where you see things only in relation to krishna otherwise not like prabhupad was in america in sally agarwal's place and they gave a fridge to keep his potatoes and tomatoes but problem was in the same fridge they kept the fish also yeah. so proper was not very happy but he couldn't have an alternative huh? so he tolerated because he thought i have come here to propagate krishna's mission huh? this is impure but i have no other alternative huh? outside the vegetables will rot huh? have to keep it in the fridge so he had to use the same fridge he tolerated that in the same house they were drinking uh, with their friends putting party and proposed to sit in one corner of the hall and peacefully reading his you know acharya's tikas and everything later on when sale agarwal and as as when they became conscious they said sorry swami ji three months you stayed with us and now we are pushing off and uh, you know many wrong things we did you tolerated us and proper said don't mention it leave it leave it forget it no problem and you gave me a place well, if you didn't give me a place where will i stay in america i have no other place he said so vishuddha uh, sattva ultra purity means what you can even go and live in a hippie land if the hippies are ready to chant hare krishna huh? so the hippies they told proper swami ji we have brought you to a dirty place where people uh, eat drugs and they do illicit uh, connections and they also smoke and drink it's a horrible place proper said why are you calling hippie land a horrible place it's vaikuntha he said why is vaikuntha because you are all chanting hare krishna therefore it is vaikuntha hmm? that is ultra pure ultra pure means your consciousness is so pure that external impurity cannot influence a person a person is free from that influence like sun for example sun can go you know fall sunlight can fall on a place where there is urine and stool but the sun will dry up the stool and it will evaporate the urine without the sun getting contaminated and that's the example given for krishna you know it is said sapar yagat shukram akayam abranam asna viram shuddham apap vidham कविर्मनीषी परिभूस्वयंभूयाताभूषण And Putana, and he will not get contaminated. Hmm? Lord Rama can touch a stone, 
and ahilya comes out and ahilya is also delivered la drama is also not contaminated hmm? this is power the ultra pure so impure semi pure pure ultra pure hmm? so we are all heading in that direction now hmm? by practicing krishna consciousness you see so yeah now you read it yeah uh, here in deep concentration the senses yeah oh yeah, i think you completed the para you completed the thing like when you read a favorite book we become engrossed in it so samadhi is somewhat like that huh? you get engrossed in chanting single thought stays in the mind huh? please read that sanskaras lead to samadhi sanskaras lead to samadhi because of sanskaras uh, which is uh, mental impressions from previous experiences it is easy to concentrate the mind on material objects the mind has a natural tendency to go outwards through the senses to embrace the external world for example due to the ha- due to habit the mind of a man will spontaneously and with great attention concentrate on the form of a beautiful woman or some eatable like gulab jamun or rasgulla or son papdi but it is almost like instant samadhi ah uh, Sam- yeah in the impure state in the impure state we get instant samadhi on impure things huh? we get immediately attracted to it huh? our antenna is on immediately huh? because you know as i told you in one of the previous classes you know there is a three three story building huh? in the ground floor there is beer bar permit room and all that in the first floor there is gym and second floor there is a his contemplative whatever like that i told you, you know? so you will connect according to your uh, what you resonate with you all know the resonance principle anybody can say what is resonance what is resonance is it simply when uh, two things they match frequency exactly exactly when you take two forks and the frequency matches you know because of the vibration of the one fork other fork also vibrates like that they, they vibrate and the so the frequency matches then there is a so in the same manner right now you all are sitting in this class and you are able to hear me and speak because you have a spiritual inquisitiveness huh? you have a desire to advance in your spiritual uh, life huh? therefore you are able to understand the subject and there are so many youths wandering in america why they don't come for these classes because that frequency is different they are looking for liquor they are looking for uh, cigarette huh? and there are other people who are looking for politics and there are other people looking for sports huh? so because your frequency is matching with iskon boston temples ambience what one more principle is providing that so you are able to see that you know yes this is the kind of thing i was looking for i am getting it so it's matching and when the frequency matches you know then there is a feeling of comfort huh? there is a feeling of uh, satisfaction feeling of peace huh? Huh? and therefore when we are impure impure people are feeling very comfortable with impurity like a pig is very comfortable in a gutter which is nasty st- <laughs> stinking and nasty because he is comfortable in that platform pig huh? so he resonates with the ditch Huh? pig like that similarly a passionate boy he will resonate with a passionate girl and he will also eat passionate foods huh? you know extremely thick at huh? food he will eat similarly a sattvic boy he will uh, resonate with a sattvic aharam huh? and he will also uh, you know in a sattvic ambience he will be very comfortable so in this way we all have to gradually go from a lower plane to higher plane huh? by that and uh, yeah Please read that sanskaras are compared to grooves. Sanskaras are compared to deep grooves and trench cuts in the mind, which make the mind always run in the same direction towards Maya and away from Krishna. Practicing sadhana bhakti and concentrating in japa gradually fills in these grooves and cuts, and cuts new transcendental pathways on the surface of the mind. Regular chanting and observing our mind attentively, hearing the holy name will fill up the mental trenches. and yeah. gradually make new divine impressions in mind which are sanskaras yeah. this is a very important point why some of you may say prabhu ji you are saying that i am resonating with sattva guna but i am sorry to say i am not huh? i am also res- resonating with tama guna or raja guna some boys say like that huh? you know you know prabhu ji you are talking very high things and i am not re- resonating with them and i am more resonating with passion and ignorance what to do uh, that means you know we have cut Uh, our uh, like in wet cement you know if you uh, if you put a, a l shaped beam uh, you know on a wet cement then it forms a groove uh, 
And whenever you throw water, it will always throw in that direction. Because the cement has become dry now. Huh? And the wedge is already made. So water is always going to go. Like in a bathroom, sometimes what happens? You know, a, a poor civil engineer, not so well-informed fellow, he makes a slope like this, you know, slope, uh, water slope. But the hole in which the water should go is in the top here, this side. Huh? And you know, water goes here and then it's st st stored like that. When you are standing in the bathroom, you, your feet are always in the water. You feel very uneasy. So what will you do with any of you? So you, your bathroom is like that. What will you do? Do you have any idea? We should level it again. We should raise uh, the level. So yeah. You have to first put a cement like this and uh, in the level thing put. And then, you, in fact, you have to make cement like this. Because if you make it like that, then the water will flow down and come into the hole and it will go. Same thing we have to do with our old sanskaras. Fill up the old sanskaras, bad sanskaras, and then make new sanskaras which will slope towards Krishna like that. And that is not impossible. So even if there is a cement floor which is flowing in one direction, you can put more cement, you can bring. Put more cement and make it make the slope like that. And that's what he is saying. So, we can go from Tamaguna to Rajaguna to Satuguna. It is possible for us. Huh? Yeah, please read that. Replace Bhoga Vritti with Seva Vritti. Replace Bhoga Vritti with Seva Vritti. Patanjali gives a secret of controlling mind in Yoga Sutras, in his Yoga Sutras. When negative or harmful thoughts disturb the mind, they can be overcome by constant pondering over opposites. Vitarka Bhavane Kajipaksha Bhavanam. Yeah. A devotee must be ever alert, always watching the mind. When you, whenever useless or sinful thought waves arise while chanting Japa, they should be immediately replaced with positive thoughts. Such action will create new mental habits of conducive of conducive to spiritual advancement. Okay. Uh, can you explain? Uh, can you explain this, please, Shekhapu? It's a very nice point it is. Yeah, so it's it's like opposite uh, reaction to whatever sinful thoughts we are having. So uh, what I feel is if we are having any sinful thoughts or negative thoughts or useless thoughts while we are chanting or whenever we are concentrating on something, not, of course, in this scenario it is chanting, but uh, during anything. So what, what we could do is we could, I mean, immediately after that negative thought, we could think of a positive thought like bowing down to Krishna, like, Imagine ourselves in a temple going down to Krishna or helping yeah. someone, probably some, some positive thoughts so that slowly uh, we are kind of uh, training our mind to think only positive instead of thinking negative. So which is really, uh, it's a really smart idea. Yeah. I mean, it's a really smart thing to suggest actually. I never thought of that. Because uh, even in Japa, even I face such situations where I get some negative thoughts and all. Yeah. That is something really interesting and, uh, in other words one should replace the thoughts of enjoyment with the thoughts of service example uh, replace thoughts of beautiful women by gopis so. yeah for example you know say you are going to the kitchen to take your prasadam huh? and then you find many devotees have to rush to the office you know they are getting late and there is no one to serve huh? Then uh, the kitchen head is expecting you, Prabhu. Instead of you eating prasad now, can you please serve? And you immediately oblige. Yes, Prabhuji, no problem, I'll do it. So you went to eat, but then you ended up serving that. Why? Because you are willing to serve. Similarly, sometimes our mind uh, looks at the things of the world in an enjoying mood and we can transform it to a serving mood. Can any of you give some more examples similar to that? Where, where does the enjoy mood come and how you can convert it into a serving mood? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah, please, Chaitanya Prabhu. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Prabhuji, I think, uh, uh, I feel like we should, uh, work, like whatever service or whatever work we do, we should uh, attribute it to Krishna at the first level. Yeah. And then from then on, all our work or whatever we try to do, we, yeah. we attribute it to Krishna. So our mind automatically thinks like, whatever I do, I should do it for Krishna. So maybe the negative thoughts might go out and all your work will pre probably be in your serving attitude because you're trying to do it for someone else who is a supreme yeah. person. Brilliant. Very brilliant. Instead of doing uh, some mundane work, we can do some spiritual work. Uh, 
you know, for example, there are so many men in the trains I see uh, distributing, you know, books, karmi books, and they earn a salary. And I used to tell them, hey, anyway, you are uh, holding a big number of books in your hand and sending in the train. Why didn't you sell Krishna books? If you sell Krishna's book, you will also get some money in that. So you earn a livelihood by selling Krishna books, uh, Krishna related books, and you will also get Bhakti Sukriti. <laughs> In the same act, but you the, instead of doing for a uh, commercial business, you do it for Krishna. That's a very good point. We can uh, uh, transform our, like Arjuna is fighting, Duryodhana is fighting, but Arjuna is fighting for Krishna's pleasure, while Duryodhana is fighting for his own sense gratification. Isn't it? Yeah, that is true. In the same manner, sometimes when we look at the world, we get an uh, enjoying problem. One example I'll tell you. One boy was telling me, one devotee boy. He went to Mayapur Dham, you know, and there he got a big cake, round cake. So his mind was telling him, hey, the cake is so good. Come back to your room, keep it in the locker. Every day you can eat little, little. For one week you can keep eating it. Such a delicious cake. And then another part of his mind said, Are all my roommates are there. If I am eating alone, they may ask me what I am eating. It's not very good. And why don't I share it with everybody? So... Out of these two, which is a noble thought, which is a less noble thought? Anybody? The first or second, which is noble, noble thought? Sharing with everybody. Ah, sharing with everybody. That is a noble thought. You know? So, but for us to perform that noble thought is a little difficult. You agree? Huh? Because the mind uh, says, no, no, no. If I give it away to everybody, I can't eat tomorrow. You know, the cake is very nice and I only brought it. If they want cake, let them purchase and eat. You know, why should I give mine? <laughs> mine gives uh, so many glib excuses not to give, isn't it? You can see that. So, therefore, you will find to uh, have that noble thought, persist on noble thought, we need good association. Huh? That's why there's a bhoga vritti means I want to eat the cake all alone myself. Seva vritti means let me share it with devotees. Huh? Mm. They will also bless me. If I give them the part of the cake, they will bless me and I can earn blessing. And that is more superior than just enjoying the cake myself. Huh? So, in this way, that's what he is saying here in uh, chanting Vidarka Bhadane Patipaksha Bhavana. Counteract the impure thoughts by pure thoughts. And, uh, less noble thoughts by more noble thoughts. Huh? Like that he is saying. Like here on the left side, you find Ravana. He is having impure thought huh? of exploiting Sita, other man's wife. On the other side, you find Hanuman. He is also seeing the same Sita, but he is seeing her in the motherly mood. Huh? How I can serve Ram by, by serving Sita also, uh, arranging for her to meet her husband, Ram. So you can see the left side is Bhogavrati, right side is Sevavrati. You find Ram and Hanuman. Uh. So then this we will start uh, tomorrow when we come, how to control the mind. Till now we understood the concentration very well. Now we will go to the solution now. Uh. So uh, replacing Bhogavrati by Sevavrati is one solution. And the sanskaras we understood now today. Uh, they lead to Samadhi. The object of concentration should be sound of Krishna and the form of Krishna. But initially sound is possible. When, when our love for Krishna develops, then form also will manifest in our heart. Uh, gradually. Then Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, the concentration we learned very nicely today. Very elaborately. Uh, so thank you all very much. When I come tomorrow, I will continue. I am going slow in this chapter for a purpose because the chanting of holy name is the most important. The purpose is 90% progress comes from chanting. Therefore, this particular lesson, I am going a bit slow. Hope you will not mind me going so slow because if you learn these good things, it will be investment for your whole life. Hmm? Thank you. Shri Prabhupada Ki.